This is the Yamaha CS50, and I want to show you the ring modulator section. But before we look at that, let's look at some other things we've been talking about in regard to the filter and other sections. The overall filter cutoff and resonance. Here we'll just do a quick demonstration. You can see these are like the levers that control the touch response section. They're actually sliders that are kind of in a switch format. And then you can turn up the resonance. There are, there's obviously a wide variety of sounds possible just messing with those alone in combination with the filter section and the other effects. Okay, next we have the ring modulator. And ring modulators are extremely cool. Um, they're not something that you would normally expect to find on a polyphonic synthesizer because they're such a traditional synthesizer effect as opposed to a performance effect. But for whatever reason, it's here and we should be very glad. Okay, so once again, Yamaha has gone completely overboard. This ring modulator section includes an extra oscillator, which is part of the ring modulator effect, as well as an extra envelope, which I'll demonstrate. Okay, the modulation slider switch here gives us the amount of modulation. And the speed obviously controls the speed of the modulation without any speed. You know, let's turn the, the envelope off and the, keep the depth up. You can hear that it's kind of, it has an amplitude modulation sort of effect to it. Next we have the depth control, which is basically how much the envelope will affect the sound. So let's get into the envelope part. Attack time is how long it takes for this effect to ramp up. Decay time is how long it takes for the effect to ramp down. So let's, let's hear a little bit of that. And we have these settings here. Let's put them all the way up. Without any depth, we just hear the speed of the modulation. But with depth, we can hear the attack time and decay time come in. And then by controlling the attack time and decay time, we control the going up part of the effect and the going down part of the effect. Without any attack time, it starts at the top of that arc. Without any decay time, it goes up and then falls right down. So then you can set it to your per personal taste and then control the depth. And in that you can control the speed as well. And the amount of the effect. So you can get a whole bunch of different subtle or extreme effects using this ring modulator. And there are a lot of ways you can use it in very subtle ways to fatten up the sound or to cause modulative variation that sounds attractive.
So yeah, it doesn't have to be the full on Doctor Who every time you use it. Um, it can be a very subtle flavoring that just adds depth and breadth to your sound, which is a popular use of this when people have the CS80. And I should be clear that everything, all the functionality in this is exactly the same functionality in the CS80. So you're basically, these effects sound the same, they're just in less degree because we don't have as many oscillators and we don't have polyphonic aftertouch like on the CS80. Um, and we don't have two different layered sections of this. But still, the oscillators, the filters, all of this stuff is the same that exists in the CS80. So if you double track this, you're largely getting the same sound as a CS80, which is why this is amazing. But that's how the ring modulator section works. We also have this delightful little pitch control over here, which people generally don't like as well as pitch wheels, but it does work and it has a fine tune in the center. And then a chorus tune on the outside for effects. So that is that section.